Welcome to the Awaken on Purpose podcast, where each week you'll hear inspirational stories of heart-centered leaders who have awakened to their higher purpose and taken that leap of faith to follow their heart and make an impact in the world. Get ready to be enlightened, empowered, and transformed with your host, Jennifer Spohr. excited and just grateful and overjoyed to welcome to the show today Louise Reed. She is a coach for women. She's a leadership consultant for workplaces and a global podcaster for all. Before starting a coaching and consulting business, Louise spent 18 years in human resources with global companies in a variety of industries, high-tech, aviation, utilities, and pharmaceuticals. After a successful career helping organizations grow, scale, and thrive, Louise now focuses on her two big passions, empowering women through midlife and humanizing workplaces through leadership development. In other news, she also enjoys coffee, her new Peloton, the outdoors, and time with her boys. Welcome, Louise. Thank you so much, Jennifer. I really appreciate uh, you having me on the show. Yes, and I just really appreciate you taking the time to hang out with us today. So what inspired you to do the work you're doing today? Because you know, becoming an entrepreneur isn't for the faint of heart, that's for sure, right? <laughs> we kind of alluded to that in a pre-call as we were just chatting and, and, and reconnecting, and no, it's not. And I, you know, we sort of say that with a chuckle and a bit of tongue in cheek, but I think that it's really important to share the reasons, like you asked, what inspired it in the first place, and then really to pull back the curtain a little bit as to what it really is all about, because it really isn't for the faint of heart. To be more specific in terms of your question, it was really a series of events. And I know that you've heard, I've heard other guests on your show say the same thing, because I do listen to your podcast. So it really was a series of events with a couple of grand finales, I'll say. (laughs) One was in my personal life and one was in my professional, both of which led me to make massive change and specifically in, in the work that I do. So for the sake of time, I'll maybe just share the, you know, the, the, the grand finale in my professional life was you know, as, as you mentioned in my bio, I've been working in HR for, for 18 plus years. I had a really, really fortunate and successful career. I had lots of people who took chances on me. I had a lot of opportunity to do different things in human resources, travel across the country, supporting leaders um, and workplaces. And there was something that was unsettling for me that I was unable to identify. That unsettling feeling was also present in my 25 year marriage, which perhaps I'm a slow learner, but you know, we're all on a different kind of path, I suppose, and a different timing. And the catalyst that really caused me to make change and really made me pause to listen to what that voice was saying was the death of my mentor and boss. She uh, had a bone marrow transplant and it, that procedure that killed, ended up killing her was what had saved my, my sister's life 15 years prior. So it could no longer, you know, the whispers of, of my soul or the whispers of the universe were getting louder and it was really not a whisper anymore. And so that was really the catalyst that inspired me to do the work to, to start my own business. I'm so sorry to hear about the loss of your boss. I can relate to what you're saying. Similar to you, the death of my mom was really a catalyst for me taking action. The truth is, is that I had been feeling that push, right, to make a change for quite some time. The work that you're doing today in empowering others and in humanizing the workplace is super inspiring. Thank you, Jen. Uh, I think that, you know, it it took, it took, I'm 44, it took to 40 and and I hope it continues to, to, to really, for pieces to come together and new pieces are still coming together to create um, greater meaning um, in the world. And I, and I hope that as my life continues to evolve in good ways and some tough ways, 
Um, I mentioned to you at the outset of the show that my father-in-law just passed away a week ago. Um, you know, we can choose to use our pain to propel us. And while right now I would say that I'm in a period of cocooning myself, um, I do know that the, the pain will just serve to heighten um, and clarify my purpose. Absolutely. On that note, I also believe that every experience in our lives shapes who we become. And you've just shared some pretty significant experiences in your life. Is there one for you that most stands out in terms of shaping the person that you've become today? Uh, I, I know that um, you shared with me just a, just a few handful of questions where you kind of like to take your conversations. Again, mm -hmm. I know they go, the conversations with your guests go where they go, right? So they can create meaning, you know, so they create meaning for your listeners. But I read this one a few times that I think I've, I, I've talked about in my own head, a different answer each time. The one that came to me this time, it actually predates me yet I feel its impact on my life has been paramount. And that was, wow, there's, this, there's, a, there's a theme here, Jen, it's death. Um, so clearly it's, it's weighing on my mind and in my heart. Um, my grandmother, my mom's mom, passed away before I was born. And the reason I bring that up is because my mom is a, is a, is a powerful, was and is a, powerfully, um, a powerful influence in my life. And that was her biggest, her biggest life event. And that hugely influenced how she showed up every day as a mom, as a friend, as an, as an employee. And I saw that. I would watch my mom and listen to my mom. I was her shadow. I would go anywhere she would go. I would listen to anything she said. I would want it to be just like my mom when I grew up. Um, and so it was, how could that not have influenced me as well? And I know that, um, you know, so my grandmother, my mom was 18 when her mother died. And for her, there was no greater loss. For her, there was no greater event, single event that happened in her life and it forever changed her. And so when I was growing up, my mom used to say to me, no one is dying or dead, this can be fixed. And so I feel like I have used that as well as a few other kind of key phrases and mantras. That's one that's been with me my whole life. When you spoke of your grandmother, as soon as you said that, I got from top to bottom body chills. Aww. Yeah. I you mean, know, no. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> well, I just, I, I think we could, we could just explore this so... Oh, I could talk about this for days. <laughs> I know you could. And I would love to hear kind of even your perspective on, uh, you know, on, on, on why and... Yeah. I know we've even just had, we've had so many connections over the conversations that you and I have had in terms of um, similar sorts of life experiences and different yet similar, if that makes sense. And there's, I, I've not explored a lot about lineage and those who have passed and the energy that transfer might not be the right word, but there's something there that's very fascinating for me that as I'm going through this period right now of being in my cocoon, I'm really feeling more connected to those who have passed before me in a deeper way than I ever have before. Yeah, I mean, I'm happy to elaborate that on that a bit if you want. Um, I, you know, I believe that our and I've also had way too many experiences that can't be logically explained, but I believe that our loved ones are always with us. I mean, they, uh, when they pass away here, they're experiencing a transformation of energy, right? Like I believe our souls are eternal. So they're still with us, just not with us in the same form as they were before. And death is a really tricky thing because we're so sad, you know? Um, and I think about when, I mean, I've had grandparents that have passed, but I would say that the one that has affected me the most is when my mom was terminally ill from cancer. I, you know, on one hand, it's hard to make sense of it all because why is this happening to that person? Right. Why, why do they have to pass on? But then on, on the other hand, 
that experience that I went through also taught me so much. You know, the best way I can think of to describe it is it's like your heart is so broken, but mm. it's also being cracked open. Yeah. If that makes sense. Oh, it, 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 it totally makes sense. It's hard, isn't it, to put, um, we, our language doesn't, it fails us when we try to use language to describe feelings. Um, and I think that's also what happened in my, I like to call my, this period of midlife that I went through and probably still going through to a certain extent. Um, my ex-husband calls it my midlife crisis. I call it my midlife awakening uh, because I think it did just that, that I had to have a breakdown, to break open, to break through. And that there's, there's magic in that. There's sadness in that there's joy in that there's curiosity there's I mean you name it it's in there yes it's really it's every one of those emotions and and I'm just thinking of you know as you're talking something that I wrote so, shortly after my mom died that came to mind I had described all of those emotions you know the joy the anger I mean because there was anger um, it wasn't her fault that I was so angry at, you know, just that she was sick. Mm -hmm. But I thank her every day because had she, had we not had that experience together, I may not have had the courage to finally leave my career and, and change my life and to serve the people that I am now, you know, because although I had felt called to make a change, that experience with her and feeling like I had to choose between spending her last days with her and, and being engaged in my job, had I not been faced with that ultimatum, essentially, I don't, I don't know when I would have left. So it's amazing how some of the most painful experiences of our life can end up being some of the biggest blessings, not just for us, but in service to other people. It just, I find it very intriguing. I do too. And I, it never ceases to amaze me, each story I hear. So you know how when you hear about the birth of a new baby, the joy is like it's never happened before. Your babies are born every single day. <laughs> but it is truly a wonderful, joyful miracle. And I feel similar to what, what you, was, you, know, you just were saying about having that courage to you know, move through the pain in a way that where you crack open and create something beautiful out of something so difficult. It just, it, pain can really give rise to such possibility. It really can. Um, yeah. It really does. <laughs> I, guess. I also really, I also really fail, feel, Jen, that I've totally taken your podcast in a place. That <laughs> You're interviewing me today. No, I, I don't mean to do that. <laughs> no, no. It's, you know, I, I'm so glad that you want to talk about it because it really is a sensitive subject for so many people because when we lose somebody we are wrought with pain. It's, it's like it's suction cup to our face. You know, I mean, that's the best way I can describe <laughs> we, feel, we feel so raw, you know, yeah. but, but then, and we often don't see it at the time at that time, but then as time goes on, <laughs> these other events take place, you know, that we're connected to that. And I honestly can't help but be grateful because life is is such a a gift and you know the gift that my mom gave me just from being here and we actually had a rocky relationship <laughs> growing up but but reconciled and and grew closer so she just gave me multiple gifts in my life you know because our relationships are also our teachers it's it's just amazing the synchronicity of it all, you know? Oh, yeah. Oh, relationships. That's an interesting, so multifaceted and so, so layered. <laughs> it is. And one thing I'd like to touch on is that, you know, it happens.
happens with a lot of people that's happened with you that happened with me you know sometimes it often it takes a significant event in our life to occur in order to kind of be the catalyst to push us forward to align with our higher path mm-hmm. and that's one of the reasons why I have this podcast. It's one of the big reasons why I dedicated my life to doing the work that I do is because I want to help people not get to that point, <laughs> you know, <Yeah. laughs> when they're feeling called to change. And, and so I'm glad that we're talking more about this because whoever's listening, you know, if you're feeling called to do something else to change your life you know listen listen to that call don't wait until you receive a reminder a tragic reminder you know of how precious your life really is because you can't get back time I mean all you have is the now and those words uh, uh, have never had more meaning, don't have as much meaning until you actually experience the passing of someone. And then you realize, oh, all those things I thought were cliche, I get it now. So I really admire those individuals. I admire all individuals for different reasons. But those individuals, because we're talking about this particular thing right now, those individuals who recognize that those whispers of the, I call it whispers of the soul, but um, that the whispers of the soul are guiding them to the work that they need to do or to the relationships they need to be in, who, who are wise enough to take action on that before the tragic event hits. I, I am in awe over those people, um, perhaps because I wasn't able to do that. Um, So to those, just to echo you, Jen, if you're listening, like kudos to you and keep being curious and keep listening and hire people like Jen or, you know, read a book and listen to more podcasts. Don't stop doing the work. Absolutely. You may have just answered my next question, (laughs) but, (laughs) you know, there are a lot of people out there, right, who are at that crossroads and feeling called to do more, to change their life, to make a bigger impact. What would your number one piece of advice for them be, something that they could do to take action to move forward today? So is it one piece of advice, if I can say it in one sentence? (laughs) No, you can uh, can have five sentences if you want, you know. (laughs) <laughs> I am still going to try and keep it concise because I do like I do like to chat clearly. The biggest thing for me, uh, biggest sentence, uh, just a general piece of advice, is to follow that curiosity. And in doing that, like, how do you do that? It's about being still. I go back to my lifeguard days where when we would find a victim on the ground in our training, one of the first things we would do is look, listen, and feel. So I encourage you to look, listen, and feel. What do you see? What do you hear? And how do you feel? To listen to those answers without judgment. Listen to what comes. Because what comes might not be what you want it to be. But listen to, to what comes and explore that. Explore that with, with openness, with an open heart, with, and with curiosity. And then be brave and bold and trust that instinct and take daily aligned action. Because nothing comes quick. The awakening may come quickly, but the, the living what it is that you, that, that you want to then live and how you want to be takes small, daily, committed steps towards that thing. That is such fantastic advice so many people and especially in this day and age with technology right we're kind of just going all the time and it's so critical to create that space when we don't that's when we start to feel stuck right because we're not allowing ourselves the space to receive ideas or to receive clarity about ourselves Oh, you t- nailed it. We're, instead, we are listening to the world around us, whether it's through our well-intentioned parents and friends, our colleagues, what's going on in the news, the media, what teachers have told us, just what we have learned through our culture about what, what a good uh, mother looks like or what a good employee looks like or midlife, I should, be, I should have the house, the car, the kids, the dog, the white picket fence. 
you know, and you check all those boxes. And, and so don't be a Louise and wake up at 40, have all those things and feel empty. Yes. And coincidentally, probably not coincidentally, I was also 40. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if we, I don't know if we knew that about each other. I don't think we did. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Very I mean, interesting. Yeah, it is super interesting. Yes. Um, I mean, meditation, just to kind of add on to that a little bit, you know, just to emphasize meditation in itself as a practice can be life changing. And, and it doesn't even take that much time, right? No. And it, it doesn't require any type of monetary investment, <laughs> just a small investment of time each day for us just to take that time to be can change our entire outlook. I, I've been shocked. I, I, I knew what the data said. I've got a science background. I studied something called wellness in 1997. When I swear, when, when I used to say wellness, um, people would say, take a few steps back from me thinking I was going to like do voodoo on them or something. Whereas now wellness is much more mainstream. But you know, I, I do find while meditation is becoming more mainstream, the, the recognition of what uh, sort of of the why and, and the impact that it has is still not widely people hear the words and say yeah I know that works for other people but it doesn't work for me I don't I just think they've not found the meditate kind of meditation that works for them I, I agree I've had similar conversations with others as well that say that meditation doesn't work for them but the thing is too is that we most of us have been conditioned from a society that promotes the magic pill right or that we have to have an instant solution to our problem otherwise it doesn't work but the reality is is that meditation as with losing weight or anything else it's a practice it's and it requires and i think you had alluded to this earlier in our conversation the key to to transformation it's commitment and consistency so mm -hmm. i mean even when i started doing meditation at this point it's been like many many years ago um but it took me a few months and everybody's results are different but before i started doing meditation i had a very high stress career before my I started my business and I used to have to take two medications for anxiety mm -hmm. and after I was doing meditation for a few months I was eventually able to just stop taking those completely uh, and the stories as you know having well the no significant story being your own because you experienced it and so you know the feelings associated with the story but those stories are just endless they're, they are they are endless, and I have found that it just keeps me in a place where I'm able to respond with intention instead of react. Because I I am a, quite an energetic person, and I can be a reactive kind of personality. I'm passionate. I like to share my opinion. I love to share ideas with people and build on other people's ideas. So. My, my quick responses aren't necessarily in contradiction to someone, but you need to like let people breathe. You need to give people space. <laughs> you need to give a little space. And so I have found that it's enabled me to be more in tune with when I need to dial back. I used to think that it, I, I was turning, like making myself small by not sharing my fullness. And now it's given me more greater self-awareness to it's just giving other people space to shine. And, it, and it, it's amazing. I, I, meditate, I meditate daily, and when I've not done it for probably about two or three days, Jay, my partner, starts to say to me, he's like, you've not been meditating, have you? <laughs> he can start to see little signs that others might not notice, that he can tell I'm starting to get a little off my center. Yeah, it's, it's similar for me as well. It's just become a part of who I am, and it happens every day no matter where I am. You know, traveling, if I'm in the hotel room, I'll go in the bathroom and do it. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Not always glamorous, but you know. <laughs> Deep breathing coming from the bathroom. You okay in there, Jen? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> now that you're doing it this. Oh my gosh, I could just chat with you for days, for years. <laughs> Louise, 
how can someone find you if they want to connect with you, learn more about you, engage with you? Best way is either through my website, which is louisehreed.com, or on LinkedIn, just look me up, Louise H. Reed. Louise, thank you so much. I mean, you're just such a gem, such a treasure, and I just love thank you. With you. Thank you so much for having me on the show and for allowing me to share what I did from the heart today. That having that space was, um, was, 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 was really healing, so thank you. Oh, it's my pleasure. Thank you. Thank you for listening to the Awake and On Purpose podcast. Please visit us and subscribe to the podcast at awakeandonpurpose.com so you never miss an episode. To learn more about how you can connect with your higher purpose and take that leap of faith to make your impact in the world, visit us at jenniferspoor.com. And while you're there, be sure to join our email list for exclusive offers and a weekly dose of inspiration.